Hey, welcome back everyone to another PT Pro from the Optimal Body Podcast. Today we're going to be talking about why if I'm flexible or I feel like I have good flexibility, might I still feel so tight? Why does that happen? How do I fix it? Should I be stretching? Let's check it out. I feel so flexible, but I feel so tight. That's what we're talking about today. That feeling of like, I know that I can't touch my toes. I know that I have good range of motion, but I always feel so tight in the need to like stretch it out and foam roll and do all these things. What is best? I have this problem all the time because I'm so flexible. <laughs> okay. I mean, I'm not flexible like someone would think putting their hands on the ground or like the Gumby type party tricks, but I feel like I'm fairly flexible for somebody who, like me, a former football player would normally be so stiff. And I can sometimes feel this in my hamstrings. I'm someone who, who can touch my toes and I have that decent mobility, but I always will get just such tight spots at right up near my buttock where mm. the hamstring kind of attaches in. And why does this happen? What is really best? You, should you be foam rolling? Should you be just like lacrosse ball and, and digging in? What is the best solution to actually get to the cause? So first to dive in, like what is hypermobility? How do I know if I'm hypermobile? And so there's different tests that someone might do like a PT or a different provider right when you get into their office to kind of determine that. They'll see if you can touch your toes or put your hands on the ground. That's kind of a hallmark sign of like, oh, wow, you've got some good flexibility in those hamstrings. Other things like touching your thumb to the front, to your forearm, you know, I guess either way you go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Making like a different bowl out of your hand if you try bending your fingers back actively and see how far they just actively go back. Yeah, like if your palm is flat to the ground and you just lift your fingers, does it make like a bowl? And one of the classic signs too that you can really look is like hitchhiker's thumb. Not like does it just bend back, but does it like bend all the way to 90 degree angle? Or you know, like you touch something on your body and your thumb is just like bent, you know, your fingers just easily kind of bend or really loosey goosey. Maybe your shoulders are really loosey goosey. This is indicative of some possible hypermobility going on within the connective tissues within your body. So tendons and ligaments, muscles, you know, all of this. And that is where we start to talk about this spectrum of hypermobility, right? Yeah. And talking about hypermobility EDS and have the hypermobility spectrum disorder. And these tests are great because if you are positive or if you can touch your hands to the ground, but not all the other ones are, you know, positive, you don't have the hitchhiker's thumbs, your elbows and your knees don't hyperextend. That's another hallmark sign. Then you might just have more of a local hypermobility, like in your hamstrings. If you're going through all of these and all of them are coming up like, wow, I have all of those things, then you might more have like a global or a systemic hypermobility. And that's kind of where we're playing on this spectrum of, okay, do am I just hypermobile in one or two joints or one or two areas? Or do I have this kind of around my whole body? And you kind of mentioned this EDS or this Ehlers-Danlos syndrome. We kind of talk about that in a lot more depth on episode 63 with a couple of people who actually have it and have been diagnosed with it. But that's where your connective tissue is actually just a lot more lax. Like throughout your entire system. So think Whole like body. bladder issues, circulatory issues, like a lot of other things coming from a gymnastics background and what people might see on Instagram. Like I can easily touch my hands, like flop them to the floor. But me in general, <laughs> surprise, surprise, I am not a hypermobile person. Like I have pretty not the greatest shoulder mobility and anyone who does my programs gets to see that every time <laughs> my hip mobility is not necessarily the best yeah. in rotation and i don't hyperextend in my joints i don't classify myself as a hypermobile person even though i have flexibility in certain places yeah. And so now why would somebody, if they're flexible, be having pain or like, man, I'm, I feel like I'm hypermobile and I'm flexible in this joint, but I'm starting to get a lot of pain. I think that this is what the body does almost as a defense mechanism. Mm -hmm. A lot of times when we have a lot of range of motion, but we might not control very well throughout that range of motion, our body kind of craves safety and stability. And our body's like, okay, I got no, like no clue what this joint is doing. So I'm going to tighten down and almost like spasm or tighten down that muscle a little bit to find some stability in that system. So thank you, body. You're protecting me. You're helping me to feel that safety and support rather than fighting against it and rolling into it and having to hammer it out. Like, let's learn to work 
with the body. And I think one place that people want to go to is that is that stretching, is that foam rolling. And- this passive stretching. And it might feel good for a brief amount of time. It's going to load that tissue a little bit and say like, hey, here I am. Here's some tension. Relax a little bit. But then as soon as you stand back up, your body doesn't have any reference point of, okay, now what do we do? Rather than passive stretching, especially because if you're already so mobile and flexible, a lot of times passive stretching just puts you into your end range of motion where you don't have a lot of control and you're lacking that control in your body. How can I create tension in my body so I'm not just passively hanging? So like yin yoga, you know, where you just kind of like breathe into postures for like minutes at a time, maybe not be, might not be the best for you at this moment. Yeah. And not to mean that you need to completely stop that. If that's what you're doing, if you love yoga, if that's your jam, great. Maybe throw in a day or two or three a week or some things on the front and the back end of that yoga session to say, okay, I found all this amazing mobility in my system. Now, how can I actively move through it? The hamstrings. If you're feeling like you have a lot of this tension in the hamstrings, loaded straight leg deadlifts of some sorts, Mm -hmm. that's going to really help that hamstring feel tension throughout that whole range and learn to control the body throughout the range of hamstring length that you have. We go into strengthening and resistance training. How can we start to load those muscles in a way that feel that strength and control in a slow controlled manner? So it's not just picking up weights and and getting super strong, like, yes, let's do that. But also it's more so in order to help the body gain that control through that length that you have, we wanna focus on what's called the eccentric movement pattern of that exercise. So for deadlifts, for example, eccentric meaning the lengthening portion of that exercise. So for deadlifts, for example, your hamstrings are going to be at their most or going into their most lengthened position as we go down on that deadlift, right? As I stand up, my my glutes squeeze and I can kind of contract into my hamstrings. Mm -hmm. But as I slowly lower weight, which could be a resistance band, it could be dumbbells. It doesn't have to be like a super heavy barbell. But as you lower, you have a slight bend in the knees and you're feeling at that control with the weight and resistance as you slowly go down. Whether you're doing a slow rep or you know, faster repetitions, like we should always try to have a sense of control in that eccentric phase. But otherwise, you're just throwing yourself between your end ranges of motion and that's not gonna help us develop this uh, like understanding and awareness of where we're at in our mobility. So all of these could be progressed from, like we were talking about before that, active mobility into a more loaded thing, whether you're just doing hinges and practicing the deadlift or doing a single leg type deadlift and then adding some weight or load or for the inside of the thighs, like your adductors, if you're feeling your pain there, doing a Cossack squat, which is almost like a a more active adductor type squat that you're really going to feel in your groin. And then you can always just add some weight. So it's you kind of a really wide stance and you're almost going to lunge to one side. So your left leg is going to be straight and out to the side and you're going to be lunging to your right, keeping your knee wide and over the foot. And then you kind of pull through that left groin to stand back up. So if we move into other places that might be common areas like pecs, our chest, everyone kind of feels tight in that chest, those rounded shoulders after a long day of work. And that doesn't mean you don't have the mobility, but your body's just kind of tightening down to protect again. So something we love doing is an active wall angel where you're either sitting or leaning against the wall, trying to get your elbows and your wrists up against the wall and almost making like a snow angel. I'm from Minnesota, so snow angels are something we do. Hey, out California, here. we do it too, okay? We yeah. got big bear, we got mammoth. I haven't seen snow. anyone do a snow angel in my three years of living here yet, but I'll hold out for that. Um, so doing some sort of wall angel and then you know, moving into the strengthening bit if you're doing like a chest fly mm-hmm. or something to that extent where you have a, a light weight and you're going out into a chest fly and actually strengthening through that range. Yeah, and allowing that, those arms to come all the way down to that open range, I think is so crucial. Say you have, you know, tight quads, tight hip flexors. We love like the reverse Nordic. Mm-hmm. Where uh, you're kind of kneeling in a tall kneel and you just slowly are leaning back, keeping your buns tight, feeling that stretch and that tension start to happen through your quads. And there's ways that you can do this with like a band or something in front of you where you're kind of having some assistance with it because it can be fairly intense if you're doing it for the first time. You can. And that's where you get that eccentric because we're leaning back, loading the the quads in the front of those thighs and 
and getting that stretch, but we're still loading it and making it work. So it gets that eccentric control, that, that better control throughout the body to allow those muscles not to feel so tight in the long run. Hip flexors then, we can talk about putting a band around your ankle, like tying it onto a pole or something sturdy, and then bending, slowly bending that knee up and then really slowly extending that leg back behind you, right? Without letting the, the back move, but strength. I think that's <laughs> what we're really ultimately getting at, right? Rather than just passive stretching or just rolling it out and attacking the symptom that you're feeling, huh? We're actually getting back into the control of it and the cause of it. If you're tending to notice you're hypermobile, but still have pains and have tightness, try to give your system what it's craving and find some stability and strength within all that amazing range. Last little nugget that we tend to always <laughs> include in all of these podcasts. I think if, if you listen to our podcast on a regular, which hopefully you do, um, we always talk about one of the best ways to reduce tension overall in the body, especially if you continue to feel it tension headaches, tension in your neck and upper traps, tension in your back, tension throughout your body, whatever. We always come back to the breath and mindful breathing can really start to shift that nervous system. And we and we demonstrate examples of what this means, how to get into that true diaphragmatic breath. And in episode 160, we also did this early on episode 11, but we redid it in episode 160. So you can go back to that Thanks so much for joining us on another podcast. I hope that you really enjoyed this one. Learn a few things and are going to try out some of these exercises. Let us know which one you're trying out in the comments. And please subscribe so you don't miss out on future podcasts to continue to learn more about your body.